that. Shocking news from Israel yesterday. Hamas terrorists fired thousands of rockets into the country and infiltrated towns and villages in the south, committing murders rampaging through the streets, capturing military equipment and Israeli civilians. Israel's defense forces were unprepared for the attack, which comes as Israel and Saudi Arabia intended to establish diplomatic relations. To discuss it, I'm joined by Israeli author Hen Mazik and Robert Fox, defense editor at the Evening Standard. Welcome to both to GB News. Uh, Hen, we heard uh, Benjamin Netanyahu saying just then that um, nothing like this had happened to Israel. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the case, isn't it? Certainly not in your lifetime. Yeah, absolutely not in my lifetime, and I would argue even probably one of the darkest days in Israel history. Um, Israelis are really broken. I spoke to my family and my friends, and everyone are just in a state of shock. We haven't seen anything like that. I think the not only the the casualties, but the the images of of the barbarism and the and the children and women being kidnapped into Gaza uh, is just um, heartbreaking and, and terrifying, and it's really a tragic day for Israel. Do you think Israelis are upset with their government about what has clearly been an, an intelligence failure? I don't think we're at the point of being upset. I think Israelis are just so broken at the moment. Um, we're still, I mean, there, there were still hostage uh, situations that have been uh, unfolding uh, overnight. Uh, the, the terrorists are still inside Israel. They're still committing uh, atrocities. Uh, so I think Israelis are still at the point of uh, recovering and, and standing up, but recovering. I mean, there's over 100 families, 100 women, children held in Gaza uh, by people that have shown such disregard for, for human rights. Uh, we've seen horrific images, and I think that's still in the conscience of every, every Israeli today. It may be too early to answer my next question as well, but uh, Netanyahu has spoken of this being a war. He's obviously intending that the response will be very thorough indeed. Um, do you think that's appropriate? I think that uh, we haven't seen anything like that, as, as I said before, um, and that's why the response has to be uh, larger than anything we've seen before. There were so many cycles of violence between Israel and Hamas over the years, um, but every cycle of violence just ended with ceasefire and, and both sides went back. But I think this time um, there won't be a ceasefire the way that we've seen it. It, it cannot be. I mean, there's uh, over 100 people, again, families that have been broken, um, that are held in Gaza, uh, Israel could not just respond. Um, I, I mean, what is a measured response, right? What is uh, proportionate in, in the case where you have um, women being raped, families being torn apart, elderly being s taken into Gaza? All of this is uh, it's just so horrific and barbaric, and um, I, I don't even know what will be a measured response to that. Do you know what the motivation is for this Hamas attack? I mean, we know in general why Hamas wants to attack Israel. But presumably an attack on this scale is going to produce an extraordinary reaction from Israel. I'm just wondering, is that what Hamas wants? Does Hamas want to see the Israelis thought by the world to overreact? That has been their strategy for a long time. Um, but I have to say that Hamas, is it's... It did not surprise us that Hamas behaves this way. I mean, there is a border with Hamas and fences for that exact reason. Uh, when people are saying that Palestinians are breaking free out of Gaza, the, the meaning is exactly what we're seeing. And I think that's why Israel is so um, diligent and, and protecting our borders. Uh, we know what Hamas is about. This is an organization that's called to, for the genocide of Jews worldwide. Uh, the whole ideology is, is like that. So for, for Israelis, while we are sho shocked and broken, uh, we expect this from, from Hamas. We know that this is what um, they're about. So that's why I don't think that there is a strategy behind it more uh, for, for Hamas specifically. It's just this is um, what they are. And I think because we saw Joe Biden and Zelensky and leaders, Macron, uh, uh, leaders from around the world speaking up and condemning in Hamas so harshly, um, we're just happy that the world is seeing what Hamas is really about. Um, Robert, uh, to talk about the link with this um, supposed restoration of diplomatic relations with Saudi Arabia. Is this, um, this would be very unwelcome to Iran, Iran backs Hezbollah and Hamas. Is this the connection? It's in the background, but I think there's something that, that we just heard from Ken that's going on. There is a generation shift. And in Palestinian militancy, there is a different degree of violence. And I would say, at one level, as we have seen with people indiscriminately shooting at civilians, why? Of amorality. And coming back to your Saudi point, I think there is a feeling amongst militant, extreme militant 
uh, Palestinians and Arabs, that the old Arab world, which would sponsor them through things like um, the Arab League, the organization of the Islamic Conference, that's on other things, that in fact that they have taken their eye off the ball with how toxic still the Palestinian issue remains. But timing was everything here, and that's where I do suspect there has been re a real side of psychological operational planning. And that's where uh, we were talking just before coming in here, is it Hezbollah in the north? Because in a way, Hezbollah and Hamas have just to be rather strange about this, are odd bedfellows because Hamas grew out of a Sunni community. Hezbollah is largely Shia. That doesn't count in the new uh, multidimensional chess of geopolitics. Hamas, its sponsor, possibly Iran, Hezbollah, saw their opportunity. Yom Kippur, there was a sense somehow that things were asleep at the wheel in the command centers in Jerusalem and, and, and Tel Aviv and also that the big Arab world doesn't care. Let's go for it. And they've exploited a moment of weakness for Benjamin Net Netanyahu. Uh, he leads a pretty oddball coalition. Uh, he has been uh, in court. He's still uh, being investigated and prosecuted. So he's not the man that he was. Yes, and with, uh, on the right, the new members of the cabinet, like uh, Gvir, have been recommending maximalist positions with regard to the occupied territories, which everybody knew that in practical terms they couldn't prosecute. They can't fully occupy uh, the West Bank. But now the big question is he's faced with a huge operational and tactical question, as you have put it so clearly, is what do you do about Gaza now? They're holding hostages there. And it's the degree which changes the quality, the number of this thing. And this is a very, very grave crisis. And, and Netanyahu was talking about forming a, an all-party coalition during this crisis. Do you think many Israelis would welcome that? I think they will. I think Israelis have been um, torn uh, on, on this internal social um, political issue um, of the judicial reform and, and uh, overall, uh, and, and there were you know, hundreds of thousands of Israelis that came out to protest against it and against the government. Um, so I think at this time when we are so down, uh, Israelis want unity. That's something that we've seen throughout the years in, in every time of a war or a conflict or um, and it's human nature when there's an external threat to come together. Yeah. Um, and I think in this case, Israelis would be uh, welcoming this, this type of coalition. It's uh, early days. Um, thank you both very much for coming in on this Sunday. That's Hen Matzik and Robert Fox. After the break, I'll be speaking to screenwriter Nicholas Martin, whose latest movie is poignantly timed. Golda follows Israel's only female prime minister as she faced the 1973 Yom Kippur offensive by Egypt and Syria 50 years ago.